YOLO Live have been providing us with a huge number of updates to the YOLO Box Pro over the last few months, but the YOLO Box OG, the original gangster version of this thing, has been lagging a little bit in these updates while they've been building them for the new device. But the OG is still an awesome thing and finally we've got version 3.76 of the operating system for the YOLO Box OG. I'm about to install it on here and we'll go through it all and have a look at all these awesome new features on it. If you haven't been here before, by the way, my name's Tim and on this channel we do a whole pile of geeky camera creators youtube live kind of stuff so you're in the right place here right let's get this thing installed so i've just powered my yolo box og on and straight away it comes up with the app upgrade this is one of the great things about it is the upgrades um, poll automatically and they're really easy to install so i'm just going to go ahead and click install here and this will upgrade my yolo box as you can see it's pretty quick now it does a quick restart the box comes back up and we're all ready to go there you go the upgrade process really is that painless and that quick now what we're going to do is have a quick look at the yolo live blog page which covers all the features that are in here and then we'll go and try them out ourselves on the device so here's the yolo live blog page there's a link to it in the description if you want to go and have a look at it yourself and spend a bit more time reading it but we're just going to skim through here quickly first the features being delivered are firstly the monitor mode and what this does is it lets you use this offline as a monitor and recorder we have constant frame rates available for streaming and recordings. We have got the animated countdown timer overlay. So this is a uh, an overlay that you can use while you're waiting for a stream to start or something like that. We have got the videos from SD card ability. So you can have two videos on the SD card that you put into the YOLO box and you can set those as video sources. We have got the ability to flip the screen upside down, which um, sounds like a really basic thing, but it's actually uh, very, very useful, especially if you're going to rig this up on a camera. We've got the ability to adjust the screen brightness. We can adjust the video transition durations, and we can adjust the speed of the rolling caption overlay as well. So now let's go and create an event on the YOLO box and look at these different features for ourselves and what they can do and have a bit of a play around with the settings around them as well with a little more detail than what's on that page so here's the yellow box and what we've always been able to do is hit the plus button here and create a new live stream i can call that live stream test just like that there you go and the live stream is done now to be able to do that we've always needed a network connection now what we can do is we can just come back out to here we can hit the plus button and go into monitor mode now monitor mode just lets you use this as a monitor on the camera you can record into here as well plus you've got all the other features and everything available to you so let's pop into the settings now and I'm just going to scroll up into encoding settings where we can see we've now got a frame rate setting. In a previous release, we already got the ability to choose between constant bit rate, constant quality, and variable bit rate. And you can set the bit rate here. So now we can also set the frame rate. And you can set that from anything from 20 frames a second all the way up to 30 frames a second in increments of um, the popular sorts of things. Now 20 frames a second is great if you're in a low bandwidth situation and you need to stream something with uh, by sending up less frames just to give yourself a, a slightly better data rate per frame. 24 frames a second is available for those that really want to do that whole filmic thing for some reason. I don't see any practical reason to actually use 24 frames a second anymore, but the option's there if you want it. 25 frames a second, once again, that's for PAL TV kind of stuff. If you're recording something that you want to use for 25 frames per second broadcast, and the same goes for 29.97, which is there for NTSC. The one I'm going to use all the time is the 30 frames per second, and the reason for that is that... YouTube, the internet and everything is all based on increments of 30 frames a second. So using anything else, you're going to end up with choppy um, frame uh, interpolation, that sort of thing happening. 30 frames a second is what you want to try and target if you're doing stuff online. Now, we've also got the ability in here, just while we're in the same screen, to ramp that up to 50 megabits per second bitrate, which is going to give you a really nice clean image when you're recording this to disk. So by giving us that 50 megabit per second record rate and the ability to choose constant frame rates, this has become a much more useful device for people who want to record something to be edited later.
So we'll come into the overlays section here and I'm just going to hit the plus button to create a new overlay. Now the countdown timer is a new one that's popped up on the right hand side there. So we can just tap that and we've got two different styles of the overlay to choose from. I'm going to pick this one here for now. You can see you can change the ring color to one of these options here. I might pick that one there for example. The timer color you can choose as well and make that that kind of yellowy color there so it just stands out a little bit more gold you can set the duration of the timer so you can say do you want it to count down from 10 minutes or one minute or 50 minutes i'll just leave it at 10 for now the text color at the top there you can change that as well and the font and you can change the text that appears so show starts in 10 minutes is an obvious sort of thing to do you can scale that down if you wish so that it's a bit small on the screen and like most of these overlays you can just drag it around with your finger for placement so i'll hit done here and you can see the overlay comes up and if i turn that on now you can see that the overlay pops up there now in the background is actually my original video as well but it's kind of faded out um, it's a little bit difficult to see there what i can do is just drag down from the top of this at the moment and increase the brightness a little and when I do that, um, you can see that it's got the image of the keyboard that's coming through my camera in the background. You can't change the opacity of that at the moment, which is a bit of a pity, but um, uh, hopefully that's something that will come in another update. And you can see also that the timer starts straight away once you've um, got that thing running. So that's a great feature for anybody who's live streaming. You can start your stream going 10 minutes before the actual getting into the meat of it, get people along, get your notifications out, get some engagement going and all of that sort of fantastic stuff. So let's start looking at the next feature here, which is video sources from the SD card. You can have two video sources coming from your SD card now, which is fantastic. So you, you can have some pre-recorded video, some B-roll kind of stuff. You can get it onto the SD card and credit as a video source really simple here you can just add video source and you can go sd card video one and choose any video that you've got on your sd card i'm just going to pick that one there and hit done and as you can see that comes up as another video source and i can cut between that in the same way i would any other video i can add a second one here as well this one here and done again and there you go we've got another video source if we click on settings here we can come to the sd video card switching settings now video will play automatically when you switch to it so if i click on that one there for example it starts playing and i can choose to have that pause when i move away or to continue playing in the background or to start playing over again so I can switch to there and as you can see that one pauses at the moment. This fantastic feature kind of gives you the same as the ATEM HyperDeck functionality but just straight off an SD card and built into the box here. If you've got a production assistant they can actually swap those video sources out for other videos that are on the SD card. So you can have as many videos on there as you like but you can only have two of them set up as video sources. So a production assistant for example could swap out from between a whole heap of different videos videos that you've got there as b-roll or examples or demonstrations or whatever it is you want and then you can just keep flipping back to them as different video sources and have a really really intense production okay let's have a look at the next bit which is being able to flip the screen upside down now to flip the screen upside down you need to pop back out into the main menu and come up to the profile settings here and just scroll down to screen rotate so you click in that one and rotate the screen simple as that nice and easily done and now i can just pop back out here and hit the plus to come back into monitor mode now it might feel like a really simple sort of thing to have but it's actually quite an important feature because now you can have your cables coming out the bottom of the device when it's rigged up onto a camera and you can use the thread on the top to um to put a, an arm onto or something as well so it's actually quite an important feature for people who are rigging up the yellow box to a camera rig now the next feature we've got on here is the screen brightness. You, know, you saw me use it before but I'll show you how it works. If you just swipe down a little bit from the top of the monitor it gives you this brightness bar and then you can just come left and right on there to increase or decrease the brightness. Really easy thing to do. Um, as I was saying earlier it's incredibly powerful because it lets you reduce the brightness in situations where you don't need a bright monitor and it's going to extend your battery life. 
Okay, let's have a look at the next feature, which is the ability to change the duration of video transitions. Now, by default, when you move between two different video sources, it just gives you a straight cut like this. If we go into settings and have a look at video source transitions here, we've got the ability to change that, say, to a directional wipe and get really Star Wars-y on it. So, as you can see, I do that, and it gives us that animated wipe across there. By default, it's always been a second and a half duration for these sorts of things. What I can do now is I can slow that right down to three seconds if I want to. And as you can see, that wipe takes a lot longer to get across there. Or if we're doing something a bit more fast paced, then we can bring it back to a half second duration. And as you can see, that's a lot prompter. This just gives you a little bit more creative control over what's happening on your live stream to get the feel right for the stream or the video that you're producing. Another thing that they've given you a speed option on now is also the scrolling text overlay. So let's have a look at that one. I've typed in a string of random text in here. I just wanted to show you that you can drag this thing down and up to make it more visible. You've got all of these overlay things that we've had in here before but what we've got now is this scrolling speed so i'm just going to show you the normal speed scrolling that we've got in this as you can see this is just scrolling across the screen at a standard rate um, which is fine but if you want to speed it up so that you can get more information in a shorter amount of time or if you want to slow it down to make sure that people have got more reading time you've got that option now so i'm just going to hold down on here and bring up the edit mode and I'm going to increase it to three times speed. Hit OK and done. And you'll see that that now starts scrolling much faster going across. And the same way you can come back into the edit here and go down to half speed. And hit done again. And there we go. And as you can see, it's now going to scroll across here really slowly. Once again, this just gives you another creative option that you can use to get things just right for your stream or video. Finally, there are a couple of technical updates in here as well. First of all, streaming to Facebook and RTMP services is now available as a single direct platform stream. And also the single direct platform streaming is the default instead of the YOLO Live multi-streaming service. So there's a couple of things just to keep in mind when you're setting up a live stream. Anyway, I hope this has been useful to you. If it has, consider clicking down here and subscribing. That would be fantastic and really helps me out a lot. Also, watch this video and this video because they'll help you out a lot. YouTube chose them just for you because they know the kind of thing you like. And I'll see you in another video really soon. Have a great day.